there we go so we are now recording hello everyone as I say my name is Lucy and today we are going to be talking about zoom now I have used uh, in my time a great many online conferencing tools or sort of online meeting tools. So I've used Webex, I've used Link, uh, I've used all sorts of other ones as well and I can, must say that Zoom is my absolute 100% favourite. Uh, it is so stable, there are so many useful tools, it's so easy to use uh, that it's, I just think it's great and every single person at the university, all staff, all students have got access to a Zoom account. So every single one of you can host a Zoom meeting. Now, I actually have a special account, uh, which means I can host webinars. So webinars are slightly different to meetings, um, but uh, you guys, any of you will be able to ho host a meeting anytime you want to. And you can invite, I think it's 200, maybe 250 participants. Um, so you can have pretty big meetings, right? Uh, and you could also just do one-on-ones. And so today what we're going to do, we're gonna look through some of the features, and then we're also going to talk about some use cases, so some ways that you might want to think about using Zoom. Uh, uh, as I say, it's like my favorite thing ever. Okay, so let's get cracking in. Let me just stop my video. There we go. Bye. All right. So, uh, as I say, Zoom, it is much more um, than just uh, a web conferencing tool. Uh, as I say, we're using it as a webinar tool. So you are using Zoom right now, whether you knew it or not. You are using Zoom right um, at this very moment. Uh, so you know that there are certain um, controls that you have. So let me just uh, get out of here, out of this PowerPoint presentation. Um, I do have another one here. Just going to show you a few things that you can do. Now, when I'm actually using Zoom, it's quite difficult to show you screenshots of Zoom. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you um, some screenshots that I've taken earlier, just so you can have a look at some of the things that you can do within a Zoom meeting. Let's say you can have up to 250 participants in your meeting. And if you have called the meeting, then you have the ability to do some controls of that meeting. So uh, you'll see here that uh, we have got the ability to control um, others. So if you are the host, you have the things to, you have the ability to do things like mute everybody. Um, so you can say no, no one else is allowed to speak. Um, you can mute participants on entry, just, so just everyone's on silent when they enter the meeting. And you, then you have the ability as well to say whether or not people can unmute themselves. So it depends whether you're going more for a discussion or whether it is more of a meeting with an agenda and you've got certain speakers, uh, because you can invite co-hosts as well. So you could say that everyone other than the co-hosts um, you know, just has to listen, but the co-hosts can actually um, uh, uh, control that as well. So they can take themselves off mute. So there's a couple of things. Um, you can actually use this to do um, online conferences as well. So not just those sort of um, small meetings, but also larger sort of gatherings of people. Um, so you may find, let's say that you're participating in um, a group, uh, let's say you're doing a group assignment or something along those lines, then um, students could just get together in a virtual space rather than all having to meet up face to face uh, and they could get working that way. So it can really works from either one on one up to, as I say, up to 250. So there's lots of different ways that you can use it. Um, you can do things, uh, you may be able to see on my screen, I've got some of these options here. Let's just go through what they all mean. So uh, this is, comes from the more button as well. So we have this thing for mute all and unmute all. So you will see listed in your participants, you'll see here it says there's only one at the moment. Um, you'll see all of the participants listed here. Uh, so you'll see who they all are. Um, you've got here the more button and that will allow you to do things, as I say, like mute all the participants on entry. That's kind of handy because sometimes when people join an online meeting, they're not necessarily, you know, concentrating. Uh, they may be typing. Ah, oh, ah, oh, dearie me. People who type in online meetings and don't mute themselves. Dearie me. But don't worry, you have the power to mute them. Uh, this play enter exit chime, so that allows you, um, so you can hear when people leave and um, join the meeting, you get a little, um, a little sound. We've got here lock meeting, so that lock meeting is about um, being able, letting your participants invite other participants. So locking the meeting stops them from just using the um, add, up, add participants button. Uh, 
You've also got the lock screen share. So one of the great things about uh, Zoom is it's not that one-way screen share. So something like WebEx is always very difficult to have other people um, sharing their screens, but with Zoom it's really easy. Um, you can allow lots of participants, anyone at any time, to, um, to share their screen, so one person at a time, but anybody who's participating in the meeting can share their screen. Or you can say, no, I'm going to lock the screen share and only me and anyone else who I call a co-host is allowed. So if you're just a participant, you aren't able to share your screen. But if you're a host or a co-host, you can. Um, and then you've got this merge meeting window, uh, which allows you to do as it says. It allows you to merge those meeting windows. So if you've got several windows open, it allows you to merge them all up. OK, so that's um, some participant controls that you can do if you are the host. OK. Uh, if you are the host as well, you can also control the meetings. So there's lots of different things that you can do. Uh, we've got an invite here. So this, oops, sorry, let's go back. Ah, oh, my, it's because I'm not using my, sorry, let me just go. Uh, last viewed. Last viewed on my up button. That works better. Oof. All right. So we have here um, this uh, control meeting so we can invite people. So that's one way. And I'll show you other ways that you can invite people. But if you're actually in a meeting already, you can invite other people. So let's say you're having a conversation with two of you. And you go, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, Jane should really be involved in this conversation. Then you can just, um, from within the meeting, you can invite other participants. Uh, that Manage Participants I show, just showed you, that's how you open up this window with the Manage Participants button. You have a poll button. So that's really useful if you are trying to do things such as sort of flip the classroom or you're trying to get people's, oh, you're trying to get people's attention around something, is that you can um, launch polls. So you can have multiple polls. You can pre-write those or you can write them on the fly. So you can write them and put them into your poll bank uh, and then you can um, have um, participants um, join in with those. Um, so that's really um, that's really great for using um, interactivity as well. As I say, we've got the screen share. I'll talk about the screen share in a little bit more detail. And you have chat. So chat allows the participants to chat with each other or to chat with the co-hosts or to chat with everybody. So it's a way of having that text-based. So it's really handy if you're doing things like you want to give people web links um, and things like that, or there's a particularly difficult spelling of an author that you want to do there or something like that. So there's lots of things that you can put into the chat. You also, as the host, have um, the ability to control who people are allowed to chat to. So you may say, no, you can't chat individually. So you might say participants can't chat individually with each other, but they can chat to you or they can chat to everyone. So you have all those different levels of control there as well. Um, so then you've got the record. So you are able to record either to a cloud account or record directly to your computer. So that can be very handy. Just make sure that you are warning participants. So I always say at the beginning of these webinars that I am they are being recorded, just so that if you are recording them, people are aware that they are being recorded. And then we have this wonderful thing called breakout rooms. So breakout rooms um, allows you to break um, the participants into several rooms. Uh, and you can have as many rooms as you want. Um, so that can be really handy. Let's say you're doing something where you've got a little bit of group discussion. You've got some work where you work together and then you break into small groups, have group discussion, and then people report back, that kind of thing. Or it may be that it's a conference. Uh, it's an online conference and you've got different streams in that online conference. So you've got different speakers uh, at the same time. Um, so it can be really handy to have these breakout rooms. They're very easy. You just click on the breakout rooms and then you decide um, how many people you want in each breakout room. And then Zoom will either automatically split them or you can choose which participants go into which room. And then you as the host are able to go to different rooms. So you can pop in and out of the rooms. Uh, you can monitor discussions. You can give people any, um, uh, any help that they need. Um, and you can go in and maybe post some questions or you can do whatever you want but as the host you can pop around and then you can also close the breakout rooms so they're really great as I say you can do all sorts of like online conferences uh, and things like that so that's how you control the meetings um, oh by the way I did I've talked about adding participants in they don't have to have a zoom account just so you know okay
So we have then more meeting control. So once you've started, uh, you'll see here that um, I've got some different ones here. That's because I've shared. So I've got this green thing here, which is giving me my meeting ID. It tells me that I'm currently muted and that this is locked. Um, I can see that I've got my share is green and the new share is green. That just shows me that I'm actually currently sharing my screen. I've got a pause screen, pause share button there. So if I want to at any point, um, let's say that you know that you've got something in your email, um, but you don't want to open up your email in front of everybody, uh, you can pause the share and it, sent, it just sort of pauses it for them and they can only see your current screen and you can go off and do things like, as I say, go look up information somewhere that might be confidential or something like that and then restart sharing um, your screen once you've got that all that sorted. You also have this a great thing called annotate. So I'm going to... Um, I might just come back to that. Uh, or I could do a little bit of annotating now, why not? So with annotating, I can do things like I can, I just need to be careful. I can draw on my screen. So at the moment I'm talking about annotate. So I can do that. I can then sort of clear that, uh, clear all drawing. Um, and I can do all sorts of things. I'll talk more about annotate in a moment. Uh, but other things that I can do as well is I can sort of, point my arrow at things. So I'm talking about annotate at the moment. Uh, I can also sort of spotlight as well. So you can probably see my mouse there going, I'm next, I'm going to talk about more. Let's say I'll talk about annotate in, in more detail in a moment. Um, uh, but let's have a look at this more button as well. Let me just go back. Oh, I could do this. Um, so yeah, with the more button, I can go into the chat room. I can have a look. This is the breakout rooms we were talking about. This is the invites. This is where I can invite other participants. There's a record button there, so I can record this. I can disable attendee annotation. So if I'm in a meeting, um, not only can I annotate, I can allow other people to annotate. So that's really great. You can say to people, you know, highlight on the screen. What are you, um, you know, is there anything here that you're unsure about? Is there anything that you'd like to talk about next um, or, or things like that? Um, you can also, they can write text. So if uh, you can sort of co-create documents, you can be co-authoring, you can um, share a whiteboard, you can do all sorts of things. So it's really deep. Um, uh, you can have meaningful interactions rather than it just being an online meeting where it's one-way communication. This is genuinely virtual meetings that we're talking about here. Uh, okay, I've got here the hide video panel. I've got my audio options. I've got my video settings and I have the ability to end the meeting as well. So I've got lots of different stuff here. I'm just going to turn my annotate off. Okay, so there's some of the meeting controls that you have. Okay, let me just go back to my mouse. Excellent. Ah, lovely. Right, screen sharing. Uh, all right, so with the screen sharing, there are different ways that you can um, share your screen. Now, what I normally do is I um, share my desktop. So let's see here, I've got my desktop. Um, the reason I share my desktop is that's going to share anything that I bring up then. So if I switch from um, a PowerPoint presentation to Excel, um, or I switch to a website, or I do anything like that, then that means um, uh, that people will see it. If instead I had done something such as uh, um, here, Let's say I had gone straight into uh, using my Zoom slides PowerPoint and I was just sharing this PowerPoint presentation. If I then went off to show you a website and I'd be just going, oh, look at this website, isn't it great? You wouldn't be able to see it. You would still be able to only see the PowerPoint. So um, other things I can share here, you can actually share your iPhone or your iPad if they're plugged into your computer. So you can actually um, just be showing what is on your screen, your iPad or your iPhone. So that's pretty cool. You can also select a camera. Um, so that can be your inbuilt camera. So you're just sharing your camera or if you've got an external camera. And so, so this is just all of the things that are open. I also have this ability to share a whiteboard. So a whiteboard is, is just exactly that. It's just a big white blank screen that, and everyone can then scribble on. So you could do, like I say, you can do genuine whiteboarding um, within, uh, uh, within Zoom as well. Um, by the way, if you wanted to share your desktop, you could then just have a blank PowerPoint screen and you could kind of whiteboard on that. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so the annotation stuff that I was just talking about. So this annotation, as I say, um, you can have annotation that you as a host can do or the co-host can do, but you can also allow participants to, an to annotate as well. Um, and that's up to, to you to choose. So when I go into annotation, uh, I can have the mouse selected. I'm going to turn my annotation back on. Uh, I'll use the spotlight. Hang on. Spotlight. Here we go. So yeah, I can use the um, the mouse. I can use my selection tools. So selection tools just lets me sort of select parts of the screen uh, and so on. I can have text, so I can start writing uh, text onto the screen, and so can anybody else. I can draw things, so I can draw all sorts of things. I can draw big fat lines like that. Uh, I can come in and I can draw arrows as well. I can draw a big arrow pointing at that. Ooh, there we go. I can draw uh, boxes around things. Oh, oh, woo. Yep, so I can draw boxes. I can draw, hang on, let me just change the color as well. So I can do things like change the color. Let's make this one blue. Uh, I can draw circles. I can draw, what else can I draw? I can draw a big tick or I can draw a big cross. So that's a great way if you're going through something and you're asking people, well, do you like this? Do you not like this? Do you agree with this? Do you disagree with this? What's, they can just tick and cross uh, or they can point arrows at things. Yeah, that's quite a, there you go, point an arrow. So. Uh, lots of things that I can do there. I can also, okay, with my spotlight, I can do things like I can point at things. You'll notice that that is moving around as I point at different things. It's got my name on it. So if anybody else was doing that, um, they would, it would um, also then draw, sorry, it would say their name. Sorry, I lost my so I lost my train of thought there for a moment. Uh, so I've got there, so that's my spotlight. I've got the eraser, so the eraser just lets me go and rub certain things out individually, so I can rub things out individually. Um, the color here you've got, you can probably see there, let me go back to my spotlight, you've got this color. Uh, so I can change that, I can change things like the font, um, uh, the font size, things like the colors, and so on, so all sorts of things like that. I've got my undo button so I can undo things. That'll bring things back. I can redo to redo things. And then I've got my clear button. So the clear button allows you to, if you're the host, is to clear all drawing. Um, uh, you can clear your own drawings and you can clear other people's drawings. So I'm just going to click clear all drawings. Or I have the save button. So the save button allows me to save all those annotations. So let's say you've been working, as I say, on something like a document or you've been whiteboarding. Everybody's been scrolling all over everything. You've made some really good points. People have got rid of their messy bits they weren't interested in. Boom, you can save that and it's going to save it as a picture. OK, let me change back to my mouse and turn off my annotation. Okay, so um, as I was saying earlier with the breakout rooms, you can create these breakout rooms. Um, you just click on that button uh, and then you can assign participants into, into how many rooms you've got. So it will tell you how many participants you've got uh, and then it will also, um, you pick how many rooms you want to break them into and it will do it automatically or you can choose to do it manually. And then you just click create rooms. Um, once you have finished with your meeting, you can just click on the end meeting. And if you're the host, um, you can either uh, end the meeting for all or you can just leave the meeting and allow, that will allow the meeting to carry on even though you as the host are no longer there. Okay. All right. I think that's the end of my slide. That is. I've got a couple of things I wanted to show you. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's um, some of the great features that I like. And we've talked, as we talk about those features, we talked about some of the benefits of them. Uh, let me just go into showing you how. So you're, hopefully now you're really geared up and you're really excited and you really want to start hosting Zoom meetings. So how do you go about doing it? Well, the first time you use Zoom, it will actually want to install a little app. So you have actually now got Zoom installed on your computer. Um, so you can open that up. You can just uh, you know click on your... Windows key and start typing Zoom or whatever, how is it you find your programs? And this will open up something that looks a little bit like this. 
So you'll find here you can, you've got a button to instantaneously start without a video, start with video. And that's that's that when that video, by the way, that's not screen sharing, that is your um, computer video. So that's your webcam. Okay, so I can instantly start. Let's say I'm on the phone to somebody already and they're telling me they're going, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get this thing sorted out and it's just not working for me and I can't figure out what to do. Can you give me a hand? I can start a Zoom meeting and invite them to it and then we can start screen sharing straight away. Okay, um, Or if you go, uh, you know, emailing back and forth and you go, I don't want to email this person anymore. I really need to speak to them. Then you can just start um, straight away. Or you can schedule a meeting as well. So that's another thing that you can do is you can schedule um, meetings. Okay, so scheduling meetings, um, you can do it through this one here. You can also go into uh, the web, um, uh, the web version. So this is the web versions. So you'll see here, this is my recurring MS web Office webinar and I can end it. I normally have a button that says start. Um, I can come in and I can look at things like my profile. So that's how come I've got my profile picture there and so on. I can also have, you see this here, I've got this personal link. So I've just got my name as a personal link and you can customize that. So that is a, um, that is actually a, uh, a meeting ID. So I could use that as my meeting IDs. So anytime I invited somebody to a meeting or I scheduled the meeting, I could just send them a link to that rather than a link to um, you know, the actual scheduled meeting. So you'll notice that meetings have like weird, all those numbers after them, like you can probably see just here. I need to turn my annotate thing back on because I don't use it enough, do I? Here we go. So you'll see here that I've got this um, this number here. So instead of sending that out as my meeting ID, I can send out this as my meeting ID. So it's a bit easier to remember. Okay. Um, and so I can do all of that. I can come in. I can look at things like my meeting settings. Uh, and there's all sorts of things that I can do here. Um, I can do things like allow the join before host or not. Uh, and then I've got any meetings that I've had that I want to schedule. So you can see I've got some previous meetings in here. Yeah. Oh, this must be uh, too old, my last ones. So if I want to go schedule a new meeting, it's just going to come in here and it's going to let me do my time and date. I'm set to be Adelaide, so that's not a problem. Uh, there you see, so I've got my time zone there and I can make it a recurring meeting um, and so on. Okay. So there's all sorts of stuff that I can do in there. So you can create all sorts of, um, that's easy ways for you to invite people to meetings. Okay, so that's how you can host people. If you're already in a meeting, um, you can, uh, sorry, where was I? Here we go, you can, um, as I showed you earlier, you can invite people in. So you can invite people in and then just go into um, how you want to invite them. So it's really straightforward. Uh, you can request remote control. So if you are screen sharing with somebody, you'll have your options. So you see here it's saying you are viewing somebody's screen. You have an option. You can request remote control and they can then take, oh, um, they can allow or deny that. You can then take remote control their computer. So if they are having trouble finding something on a website or if they're having trouble with some formatting in Word or anything you can think of where taking control of their computer is going to help you help them, um, then you can do that. Okay. Uh, and then um, they can stop that as well. So you can also give, um, as a host, you can give the remote control to um, anyone you want and it'll be um, It'll be shown there. So if someone goes, hey, no, but I've got this really great thing that I do, uh, one of the participants, you can say, hey, great, why don't you show us? And you can give them remote control as well. So it's got, it's pretty unlimited um, what you can do here as well. I think they just show you some green, grainy stuff. Okay, uh, we talked about screen sharing. So there's all sorts of things you can do here with your screen sharing. Um, if you have more than one desktop, so here you'll see someone who's got two desktops. So if you've got two screens, you'll have two desktops. So you decide which one to share with them. Um, and yeah, so some pretty cool stuff. Now, this is all uh, some stuff around screen sharing. This is all of the um, stuff with the Zoom Help Center. So their Help Center is really good. They've got some really great videos. Um, you know, one minute video introductions, join a meeting, recording a meeting, you know, scheduling a meeting from the website, all sorts of stuff that you can do here. Um, 
so they've got some really great they've got some really great um, resources if you're unsure about anything. But that really brings us to the end of my little tour I wanted to do for you of Zoom. So uh, just to um, start my video up again. Yeah. So just to confirm, if you have an A number, you have a free Zoom account. Okay. So you can start using Zoom today if you want to. So the kind of things you could use it for, you could use it for those one-on-one -on -one chats where you just want to have a little bit of FaceTime with somebody. Or you could do it if you're co-creating something like a, um, a document or you're trying to bounce ideas around without having to actually um, locate in the same place. I know that, for example, um, health and medical sciences use Zoom all the time for virtual meetings meetings um, because saves them walking up to AHMS and medical school you know, saves them having to walk from one place to another um, you can't so if, if you're working with somebody overseas or you're working with somebody in state or you're working with somebody in the next building um, you can do that and you can have as many participants as you want so it's good for that one-on-one -on -one. you can also do for small groups say three to five people if you're working on a project for collaboration you know sometimes um, collaboration you really want to see each other's faces and, and talk to each other so zoom works really well for that it's so stable and it's so easy but you can even do things as big as um, you know you can use it for virtual classrooms because you've got that ability to do the annotation to do polls those sorts of things the breakout rooms you could use it for a virtual conference so you can have up to 250 participants I'm pretty sure it is oh last time I read um, and you can as again you can still have those breakout rooms you can be recording it, you can share screens, you can let other people share screens, you can have chat going, you can have, um, if you, the Q&A feature that I use is part of the webinar feature rather than being a meeting feature. Um, but there's all sorts of things that you can do and everyone can be annotating screens. So it's a really strong collaborative tool. I love it, I, I just, I love it. Um, and it's so easy to use. So I would really strongly recommend that you use it. All right. So. I'll just ask if anybody has any questions and while I'm doing that I'll just launch my poll. You do know that we do like um, to get your opinion. I'd like to know whether or not these are useful, these webinars that we do. So I'm just going to launch that poll and I'll give people a chance to have any questions that you have and I'm just going to go into, uh, let me stop annotating. Here we go. Uh, all right. Um, so, yeah, we do still uh, have another couple of webinars to go uh, before we break up for Christmas for our summer holidays. So we've got one coming up on tables of contents, so equations, figures, indexes. So we're just going to talk about indexes, not just table of contents. So helping people find your stuff, really, uh, essentially in Word. And then we're going to be doing a little bit of a fun topic uh, in December, doing a little bit of graphic design. Now, I'm not a graphic designer. Um, I know just enough about graphic design to make my design not look completely undesigned. Um, so I'll be helping you with those sorts of things as well uh, if you're interested. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to close that poll in five, four, three, two, one. Thank you very much. And we'll just wait and see if anybody has any questions. If you do have a question, if you're frantically typing a question, just raise your hand so I know not to end the meeting. Otherwise, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Okay, well, the recording will be up on our YouTube channel later on today. If there's anything else you'd like to see us doing in these webinars, we have planned a little bit into January and February next year. Um, but if there's anything you'd like to see, please, please get in touch, it.training at adelaide.edu.au. And other than that, I will see you in a fortnight. Bye.